My name is Liam Kennedy. I'm at the, um, the Great Famine Voices Roadshow in Quinnipiac in the United States. Maybe I'll say a little bit about food exports during the Great Famine because it came up recently in a discussion I was engaged in. And I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about, I mean, at one level, it's appalling to see food being exported from the island of Ireland in the later 1840s, you know, at the height of the Great Famine. However, we also, we need to think of food imports as well as exports. And during most of the famine period, food imports were exceeding um, food exports. And from an economic point of view, it makes sense to ship out high value, low calorie foods and import cheap, um, cheap foods such as Indian maize, which is rich in calories. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of defies common sense logic, but it does actually make economic sense. Now, uh, there is also the issue of who the food exports, who the food exports benefited. Um, clearly, exporting oats and wheat and so on did not benefit the rural poor, who didn't have access to, the, to those resources, but it did benefit the market-oriented farmers, middling-sized, larger farmers, Irish landlords and so on. So looked at from another angle, there is a huge social class dimension to the issue of food exports um, versus keeping them at home. I mean, commercial farmers, mostly Catholic, Roman Catholic, um, and Irish landlords, mostly Church of Ireland, they would have been radically opposed to barriers to the free to the export to free trade in in food so it's it's i'm often confronted with the issue of you know isn't it terrible that food was exported during the great famine uh, at one level i can see why and visually it's extremely bad um, on the other hand i can see an economic logic to it and beyond that i can see huge social class differences in terms of interest in the, the export trade. I mean, had the export trade in cereals, for instance, been halted, my guess is that would have been, that would have given rise to massive social conflict within Irish society. And perhaps that goes back to the more general point that we tend to think of the, uh, of Irish society certainly Catholic society as largely homogenous but really it's a class-based society and there are quite divergent interests between different social classes not only within Ireland but within Catholic Ireland.